Yeah. There are a few more seats if you want to come in. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, it's okay. We'll record it. It's alright. I see the pathway right here. I know, right? So, hey, Kelly's. Okay. Do you mind getting the lights for us? Push your seat back just a little bit. Uh, other switch. Okay. Hey, I'm um, sorry, so we don't have any more space left. But I think um, is this supposed to be hard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. Can we be part of you? There is a pizza in the back if you want to stay in line with that. We are going to pack. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> we have two seats. Yeah, we have there are two seats. We have a have seat up here. Seat. Uh, okay, one seat. Okay, one seat. Cool. I'm grab the um, Just out of curiosity, I wanted to know how y'all found out about this. So could you raise your hand if you found out about it through Isaac's um, post through BearSync or email? Okay, cool. And then how many of y'all found out about it through an email I sent out through the UFB? Okay, and then how many of y'all found out about it through our Facebook page? Okay, cool. Embarrassing um, for the win. Yes. <laughs> and then, um, were there any other ways that y'all found out about it besides the ones I listed? You can shout out. Will Joe. Okay, thanks. Yeah, well. Um, awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. We were that big, to be fair. Yes! Yeah! All right. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Um, I think we'll get started. Uh, welcome everyone to UCS and UFB's first Getting Funding and Financial Signatory Training. Um, we're so happy to see all of you here. Uh, to start off, I think we'll do introductions. I'll start. Uh, my name is Will. I'm a sophomore. I am the UCS Student Activities Chair, so I work with uh, the SAO closely and our Student Activities Committee to uh, process club cate categorizations and recategorizations. Um, I'm also a member of the UFB, the Undergraduate Finance Board, um, which Yusuka, I think we'd be happy to tell you about it. Thank you. So, I'm Yusuka Akasaka. I am the UFB chair, and I'm really excited to see this turnout and um, do this workshop because I think there's a lot of confusion surrounding um, UFB, student groups, getting funds, and such. And there are several other members of UFB in the room if you want to stand up and uh, say your name. So, these are all uh, UFB reps. I guess I'll go. Hi, I'm Daryl. I'm a UFB rep. Oh, oh. Hi, I'm Alessandro, I'm a USB rep. I'm Catherine. Ooh. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I'm Joseph. I'm Catherine. Hi. Um, Joey. Oh, sure. I'm Joey Steele, I'm the director of student activities. Cool. Sure. I'm Alex. Um, I'm the UCS treasurer as well as a member of the um, SA committee. Great. Okay, sweet. So, um, sort of an outline of what we'll be talking about today. We'll start with, we did our intros, did food, um, then I'll be going into sort of what are the different categories for clubs on campus, um, what does it mean to recategorize, and how your club can take advantage of that to get more funding. Uh, then Yusuko will be talking about UFB and other funding sources. We'll be going over BearSync, how to use it. Then uh, we tacked on a bit on room reservations, which isn't directly related to funding, but we got a lot of requests uh, to cover that topic as well. Um, and then we'll do questions at the end. Um, and if any time you have like a very specific thing related to something that we're going over, feel free to raise your hand. Um, and for people who just walked in, uh, if there's no space, we'll also be posting a recording of this as well as the slides online. So don't feel like you have to like be packed in. Great. But grab pizza. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the first topic we'll be covering is the different categories of clubs on campus. So we have four main categories: uh, one, two, three, and S. S is sort of in its own space of its own. S stands for a service group, and your club will be a service group if it's one that, uh, like, its main goals or activities primarily focus on the greater Providence or, like, world community uh, versus the brown students. So, for example, HOPE, which is housing opportunities for people everywhere, or, like, PD Green, most of their stuff has to deal with uh, the broader Providence community, so they are classified as a service group. Um, and service groups currently they receive $200 of baseline funding per semester uh, and they are also eligible to apply for UFB supplemental funding. Um, what it means to have baseline funding is basically you get $200 per semester from the university and you are able to use that fund 
uh, in whichever way you want to help further uh, your club. So whether that's buying food, buying publicity materials, like paying a conference fee, things like that, it's really at your discretion. Um, and then applying for UFB supplemental funding means that if your group needs uh, additional funding to that baseline, uh, you can then come to UFB and submit a budget for uh, approval, which we'll go over how to do in detail later. Um, and then for every group that's not S, we have category one, two, and three. Um, every new group that's not an S group will start off as a category one group, and after a semester of being active as e uh, of, of S category one group, you're eligible to recategorize into category two. Um, and the advantage of being a category two group is that you receive that $200 of baseline funding as we were talking about earlier. Um, then after a semester of being active as a category two group, you're then eligible to re-categorize uh, as a category three group. And in addition to the baseline funding, you are also eligible to UFB annual and supplemental budgeting. So supplement, supplemental budgeting, as we were saying earlier, is when you uh, need extra money, you can apply to UFB. Annual budgeting happens uh, late in the spring, and basically you submit a budget with all the expenses that you predict you will uh, have for the year, and UFB will do the best to um, cover whatever costs it can. Um, yeah. A quick note about supplemental budgeting. So um, UFB has meetings Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. in this room throughout the year, and um, that is when groups come in to apply for supplemental budgeting. So um, a group would come in and present their budget that they have gone over with their UFB rep beforehand, and then UFB will um, go over it and discuss and um, will grant m money afterwards, or not grant money. Yeah. Um, and generally, I think it's encouraged that your club applies for recategorization. As you can see, like just as the higher you go, the more money you get. Um, and that's always just nice to have extra money, even if you don't necessarily like need it immediately. If something comes up, um, having that can be uh, very helpful to your club. So does anyone have questions about this? Great. Oh, yeah. Um, would you need to show up in person to the meetings, or is it something you submit for your rep? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, it, I, I will say yes and no. So. Um, for budget requests under $500, if you email your rep and um, you've talked to your rep about it already and um, you cc UFB at brown.edu, then you don't need to come in and then UFB can review it the next Tuesday or Thursday. And then for budget requests over $500, which are a majority of the budget requests we see, um, a financial signatory has to be present to um, present to UFB. Um, okay, and then this is just a little bit about how recategorization works. So the application for recategorization this semester will open on February 9th and will close on March 11th. Um, we do review applications on a rolling basis, so if possible, try to submit yours as early as possible so we can get back to you as soon as possible. Um, how the steps work, uh, basically you will have to update your constitution if anything changes. Um, you'll also need to gather 15 signatures from active members, um, and when you get signatures, we ask that you get a physical uh, sheet with like their signed, uh, full sign name, their class year, and their email. We ask for a signed sheet because it's hard to verify like digital signatures. Um, then once you have that set, there's an application online which will be linked on the UCS website. It'll also be on BearSync. Um, fill that out. It basically is a couple questions on, hey, why do you need more money? What have you been doing this semester? What are your goals for next semester? Um, and then schedule a meeting with your student activities representative. So also on the UCS website, um, there's if you go to the student activities tab, there's a page specifically for recategorization, um, and there listed will be your different rep, uh, the different reps for the various areas of, of of clubs that we have on campus. So just contact the rep uh, for the area that most closely uh, fits your club. Uh, and that rep will be there to answer any questions uh, you may have, and also just make sure that you have uh, all the correct, inf uh, all the like needed materials for uh, the application process. Then you just submit your application, and um, we, Student Activities Committee, will get back to you um, in a couple weeks about the decision. Uh, and then for recategorization, all the funding uh, will happen in the semester after. So if you get approved as a Category Two uh, group this semester, the two hundred dollars of baseline will kick in fall of um, 20, 2018. Are there any questions on this uh, yeah, slide? On categorization. Okay, sweet. Um, and all the information will be on brown dot brown dot brown ucs Yeah. Does the meeting with the rep have to also be before on March eleventh? Um, yeah, we typically ask that you meet with the rep at least almost like a week before March eleventh, so that way we have some time to process. That deadline is like when the app will actually close. Gotcha. Um, okay. Great. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come up. Uh, all right. All right. 
Oh, sorry. Hi, <laughs> uh, I'm Alessandro. Um, so essentially, this is just how we get your uh, groups reimbursed. So with multiple you know, groups on campus, there are often a lot of different events and different things on campus that they will be doing to um, fill up the mission of your club. And a lot of times, that uh, those things cost money. Uh, and to do that, you're going to have to get reimbursed through SAO. So essentially, what you're going to have to do is you're going to go to the second floor of um, fonts and you know, go you know, to the left like away from Ed Rudy, and then you're going to go down the hallway and either knock on Donna or Diane's door and they'll help you there. Uh, essentially the process is that you have to have, um, you have to fill out two, uh, one of two uh, reimbursement forms, one is for food, one is for non-food items, and you're you know, going to write down a bunch of information there such as how many people perhaps attended an event that you held, um, and different information such as that and you're going to have to have receipts to attach with the reimbursement form. So make sure that with any event or other type of activity that you hold, you have receipts associated with that event so that you can get those items reimbursed to whoever it is. And also make sure that with different people in your club who may be buying different items, you have their contact information, their brown mail-in, um, and just different information like that, because you'll have to put it on the form so that that person can get reimbursed for everything. Uh, yeah. Does anybody have any questions about this? Yes. So, um, what about like electronic receipts? Is that fine? Yes. Yes. Electronic receipts are fine. Just print them out and attach it to the form. The paper. Two things I just want to say that aren't really on here. Well, reimbursements. The supplier form is really important. So, anytime you want to pay someone who is an off-campus vendor or anyone not associated with Brown, you have to fill out this online supplier form. I just should save it to my desktop. I always just Google Brown supplier form, and it works. So you can do, get it that way. Um, and also, you can't sign off on a reimbursement for yourself. So even if you're the financial signatory, if the reimbursement's for you, you have to get your other financial signatory to sign the form. And so sometimes it's a little bit annoying when you get there and don't realize that, because then you have to leave with the form, find the person to sign it. So just a heads up on that. Cool. All right. Tag in. <laughs> OK. So you may be wondering, what is UFB? I can talk a little bit about that. So, okay, so UFB stands for the Undergraduate Finance Board. And what it is, to go into it into a little bit more detail, so the Undergraduate Council of Students, um, or UCS, is, um, is like an umbrella, and then under that, UFB is a separate branch. So it's a separate branch of student government. And what exactly it does is, um, within tuition, there is a portion called the student activities fee, which pulls to a, um, like a little bit under $2 million each year um, for all students, or for all undergrads. And um, this year, it's $274 of tuition. So um, the student activities fee, um, so UFB um, allocates the student activities fee to category three student groups, as well as baseline for category two and three and S groups, as Will mentioned earlier. Um, okay, and then how UFB does that is that um, there are a set of policies and procedures that uh, the board follows, and um, if the budget is in line with that from category three student groups, then um, UFB will approve it, um, or will make decisions on it. Um, so category three groups are assigned the UFB rep. So at the beginning, um, several UFB reps throughout the room introduce themselves to you. Chances are um, your student group might be assigned to them. Um, so each student or each UFB rep um, has about 13 to 15 category three student groups as well as now S groups. And um, the, they will be your point of contact in figuring out um, your budget requests. So for example, let's say your student group has um, a supplemental budget request and uh, y'all want to travel to a competition. So um, how you would go through that is um, you would contact your UFB rep, go through our policies and procedures as well. We have a lot of resources on our website if you Google UFB Brown and um, it, it will walk you through uh, what are the policies, what falls in line, what doesn't fall in line, and if you have any questions then your UFB rep can guide you through it and can also help you out with creating the budget itself on BearSync. And then, um, yeah, are there any questions about UFB, about anything I said, or anything else that came up? Go ahead. Hi, Yuka. Hi. Is, it, is the UFB <laughs> Constitution available to the public? Yes. Um, it is on the website, UFB. Google UFB Space Brown, and 
um, it is included on our website. That's so helpful, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yes. I'm just wondering, like, to what extent, the size of a studio is taken into account when you allocate funds between different groups? For example, if a group has 20 members and it grows to be 50 members, does it have a good chance of getting more funds into account for that? Sure. So I would say that um, we don't necessarily have a set policy on that as of now. Um, that is something that the group has been thinking about, though, so thank you for bringing it up. Um, what I will say is that it's in our mission to fund equitably. Um, so I know that it, that can be kind of vague, but that means that we take into consideration um, how big the group is, um, how how much the group has grown, if there's going to be an increase of like requesting a budget of X amount and then maybe double the amount next year, uh, that sort of thing. I, I know that was kind of an ambiguous term, so does that answer your question? Okay, awesome. Can I answer yes. that? So I think it also depends on what your group's mission is and what events you might be hosting or engaging in that would require you to apply for funds from your fee. So there are large student groups that may not be requesting funds as often and smaller student groups that are requesting funds more often. So it's really a case-by-case -case basis because it would be hard for us to do like per capita caps per group, especially since students are part of more than one student group. Thanks, Daryl. Okay, are there, oh, are there any more questions on the previous slide? Okay, back there. How do we find out who our UFB rep is? Okay, that is a great question. So um, on the UFB website, there's a page that says representatives. So your group should be listed, uh, listed under there, under a rep. Uh, and if uh, your group isn't listed under there for some reason, email ufb at brown.edu. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions? OK, great. To apply for UFB funding. OK, so I did talk about this a little bit with the last slide, but I can go over it um, a little bit more step by step. So um, how you would apply for UFB funding. So uh, like we mentioned earlier with baseline, uh, your group will have $200 per semester. And then, um, so that is for your group to decide what to do. And then outside of that for annual and supplemental budgeting, you would get in touch with your group's rep. So that is on the UFB website. And then um, after that, you would create a budget on BearSync. So um, BearSync has a lot of places that you fill out within creating a budget. So just follow that out step by step and then uh, make sure to include quotes. So for example, if you're ordering um, something from Amazon, um, add in the link for the item and then also you can either add in the link for the item or screenshot it so we know exactly what the price is. And then afterwards, um, just you can have your rep look over it again just to make sure that everything is good and you can submit the budget. And then after you submit the budget, you can come into a UFB meeting. So that is Tuesdays and Thursdays in this room, New Dorm A 116E at 8 p.m. And it's first come, first serve. Then, um, so in that meeting, your financial signatory will present the budget to UFB. So we are a group of, I believe, 12 people. And then um, we'll have some follow-up questions to ask about your budget to get a better sense of what exactly it is. Okay, for honorarium, so um, for example, if your group wants to invite a speaker, um, you need to make sure to negotiate because UFB requires a proof of negotiation. So for example, let's say um, I want to invite Justin Bieber to come for my student group. So then, yeah, so then I might, so what UFB requires is I would email him and say, hi Justin, we're the student group, we want you to come in. Um, and then don't name a price, and then uh, see what he responds with and say like, okay, like we are a student group with limited funding, we're not necessarily the university and we don't have that kind of financial backing, could you lower the price a little bit and then negotiate down? Um, and then you would present a screenshot of like your email negotiation um, to UFB. And so we've had some student groups come in saying that their negotiation was over the phone or it, there aren't necessarily, um, there aren't necessarily um, like a thing that they could screenshot and send in. So just make sure that um, if that is the case, then do have some like written confirmation afterwards, um, after the phone conversation, or something that is not transcripted. Are there any questions about anything I said? 
Okay, there's a head back there. Yeah, so you need, if we meet in person with the group with the like, speaker or whatever, um, we have to have them write down like, their starting price? Or do you know is that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, for the reps in the room, what, what are some ways that you've seen maybe non-email negotiation? How that happened. Something yeah. that we've seen is that uh, like it'll be they won't negotiate through email, but the person that they're inviting will like send a confirmation email, and it'll go something like, uh, "Hi, blank, yes to confirm, I am accepting a lower honorarium of five hundred dollars versus my normal one thousand dollars." So just get them to confirm that uh, your lower price in a written form format. I think. Yeah. Back there. Uh, if you had like the speaker before, like if it's memorized, like what would you do with that? Um, do you have to get that like negotiation every single time? Like, do you have to negotiate down from the previous price, or what's yeah. like the? Okay. Oh no, 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 sorry. That's a good question. So, um, for example. Uh, like let's say my student group had Carly Ray Jepsen come in last year or the last two years and then I wanted to come in this year as well um, so even if she says the same price or says like hey I know that this is the price that I performed for last year um, if there's proof of negotiation so if there is proof that you have asked and she um, refuses then that is your proof of negotiation like the student group did negotiate Oh, okay. Yeah, I, ideally the group or the speaker or whoever you're inviting would bring down the price, uh, but if it doesn't happen, UFB at least knows that you did your best efforts to do so. Are there any more questions? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, what happens if you're inviting in a speaker who like would be working, at, like I talked a bit with the principal, basically they're like coming here as a, like if they're a Brown alumni, for example, and they're right. coming here as like a favor kind of, but then you just give them kind of like, like maybe get like rent out a hotel room or like take them out to dinner or do something like so that's not exactly one block of price that you negotiate with that one. Yeah. So um, within yeah. So within honorariums that can also include lodging and travel um, with meals or taking them out to meals. Uh, I don't think UFB would cover that. But um, wait, sorry. Could you say your question again? Sorry. Yeah. Just if you're getting, I guess, a speaker who would not have an upfront cost, mm -hmm. but you're supposed to give it, like, kind of uh, a certain amount of money as a way of, like, I guess, like, they can for their time and presence. Right. Okay. Oh, Daryl, go ahead. Uh, Daryl, Alessandra, go ahead. Well, I think an important thing <coughs> to keep in mind is if it's a Brown alumni, we won't fund honorarias or honorariums for Brown alumni past, what, four years, five years? They have to have graduated more than five years ago. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know if everyone heard that, but if it's around alumni, they have to have graduated more than five years from the time that you are requesting to have them come speak at Brown. And if you want to talk on Yeah. And then also another thing is that um, for any, like, miscellaneous prices that might come with having a Brown speaker come, even if you can't necessarily get an honorarium for them, there's always you can use your baseline funding to do like those little things you were talking about, like taking them out to a neighbor or something like that. So that could be like your use of your two hundred dollars. You can also so like Ivy Film Festival is a good example of like before their budget changed a little bit, but they would need to they don't pay any of their speakers, but they would need to book their travel. So they would book flights, they would book lodging. So what they would do is just come to UFB with quotes for all of that stuff. So they would come and say the hotel room's going to cost this much money. They would come to SAO and book it once UFB approved however much money they were going to give them. So is that kind of what you are what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. So you can break that out. It doesn't have to be in the honorarium kind of um, mo model. It can kind of be separate, and that's totally fine as long as you have quotes. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, though. I don't want no, to that's right. And then I see a question back there, but uh, there's one more thing that I wanted to add, um, but I forgot. So you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, going off of what she just said, would that then go under supplemental funding that you would work through? Yes, yes, so you would come in for supplemental budgeting. Usually uh, groups wouldn't know around annual budgeting if, like, what, if speakers would come in, and also it's difficult to book travel so far out. So for example, if annual budgeting is in April, but you want to book a, a speaker the next semester in November, then flight changes can price, or flight prices can change. Um, so we would ask the group to come in during supplemental budgeting <coughs> next semester. Um, and then I remember the thing that I wanted to say, so thank you. Um, so UFB funds to the minimum, so what that means is uh, the cheapest option for that would still let you do what you want to do is what we would fund to. So for example, if your speaker or whoever you invited wants to come in, 
um, but they requested to stay at the most expensive hotel in Providence, then, you, then UFB would not fund that because there are cheaper options available. Are there any more questions? Same with like plane versus train versus bus. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind too. Go ahead. Uh, just something to add is that UFB just created a document that is basically like a negotiation guide. It's linked on the slide too. Yeah, I saw this. Link. It's like on the slide. <laughs> so for making the slides public, it's also there. Yeah. But you can also find it on our Facebook group slash meme page. So <laughs> loan sense <laughs> to follow us on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, negotiation guide available, um, hyperlinked on these slides, Facebook page, and also on our website. Are there any more questions? Okay, great. Okay, so I'll talk about a few other resources for outside funding. So um, though UFB funds a lot of groups and um, the initiatives that these groups have, it is unlimitedly, <coughs> uh, unfortunately not an unlimited resource. Um, so I will talk a little bit about other places that groups can reach out to potentially. Um, all of these, not all of these things may apply to your group, but they would probably be just something helpful to keep in mind. So the new initiatives fund, which is run out of the Undergraduate Council of Students, um, helps or is applicable for um, category one and two groups, right? Category one and two, as well as uncategorized student groups. So for example, if your group is just starting up, but you don't have access to funding like category three groups might have, which have been established for a couple of years, this is a great um, resource to apply to. And do you want to add on to that? Yeah, so um, this is kind of uh, under my domain as the UCS Fair. Um, so specifically, this is uh, available for new uh, student groups. So that means category one or two student groups who have were created within the last pretty much two years, I suppose. Um, and this is around yeah four to five thousand um, dollars last semester, and this is by semester, so you can apply um, for multiple semesters. Um, and it, last semester, I think we had eighteen-ish um, student groups getting a range of you know hundreds of dollars and stuff like that. Um, yeah, any questions about that specifically? Oh, and yeah, the, no, you're fine. Okay. The application will open within the next couple of weeks, kind of in the same timeline as, well, a little longer, um, but kind of the same timeline as the new student categorization slash application, um, and it'll tail off a little longer since we can, um, yeah, we kind of open it as to when it ends. Um, I'll just list off a few of the other resources. Like I said before, this might not directly be ac applicable to your group, but it might be helpful for you to know um, maybe for even other things that you're doing on campus. So one is the Brown Arts Initiative, another is the Brown Venture Launch <coughs> Fund, um, the 50K Brown Venture Prize, uh, departmental funding, so um, some departments can offer scholarships or funding, um, it really depends. Um, and then another way to raise money is fundraising um, with your student group. And linked here at the bottom, um, as well as on our website, is the um, other resources, other financial resources on Campus Guide, and that will hyperlink, that will have descriptions as well as hyperlinks to um, some of the things that we mentioned. Do y'all have any questions about this? Okay, great. All right, Will, do you want to talk about Bear Sink? Oh, that's fine. Oh, <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, so BearSync is essentially the website where you're going to be, oh sorry, what my head. BearSync is essentially the website where you're going to be applying for all your net funding to UFB. So... Alessandra, do you mind speaking up with it? Oh yeah, sure, no problem. Thank you. Alright, so this is the um, BearSync website. This is essentially where you're going to be you know, doing all of your, uh, like, UFB stuff. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your club page. So we're using the Undergraduate Council of Senior Students as an example. And you're going to go to More and then go to Treasury. And then with Treasury, you're going to... Oh, sorry. If you don't have access to the Treasury um, because of permissions that are on the website, then you should ask either A, ask your club leader to give you enough permission through BearSync. And they, your, your club leader can do that by going to BearSync, searching you up, and then giving you the, the permission to be um, to be able to access the treasury. Uh, or you can ask your UFB rep to do it 
with the knowledge that the Nook Club leader permits this. <coughs> this is how you actually make a budget. So the checkbook tab essentially shows you how much money you have in total for your group. So it'll include UFB funding, um, and UFB annual funding, and supplemental funding. It'll include uh, your personal, your club's personal bank account, and your uh, baseline funding. So it'll, it'll essentially show you how much money you have as a whole, which is a good place to start in terms of how you're going to budget throughout the year and the semester. Then to actually apply for UFB funding, you're going to go to the Manage Budgets tab. And through there, you can actually create a budget. So what you're going to do is you're going to create you're going to create a new budget. And then that will then take you to, okay, I don't know, wait, what's something looks like? Yeah. You're going to create the, why is it not? <laughs> oh, yeah. So you're going to get into what, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I'll touch the, the thing. Just touch it. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I don't know what I did. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're going to create the new budget, and then that will now take you to the tab where essentially you're now going to be now putting the budget together. It's pretty intuitive, and all you have to do is name your budget now based on the group and what you're asking for. So if I'm undergraduate undergraduate council of students and I'm asking for tampons now for the net tampon initiative, then I'll now put undergraduate council of students tampons. 2018, um, and then that would be how your UFB reps can find it during the supplemental budgeting process every Tuesday, Thursday at 8. Um, and then if you have any trouble or technical difficulties trying to uh, figure out how to put together a budget, then your UFB rep will be happy to help you. And then something else to note is that on the um, budget making tab, don't forget to add your quotes. There will be a little part of the page at the bottom where you can click upload quotes. That's where you can upload your PDFs, your JPEGs, your whatever you need to be able to show proof that you have negotiated or have found the price. <coughs> All right, wait, are there any questions on any of the slides you just did? No? Cool. Sweet. Um, before I jump into room reservation, two more quick things about UFB. So just a reminder that uh, like to access UFB funding, you must be a category three group or an S group, which is another incentive to recategorize um, so that you can get these funds. And also for UFB, uh, if you want to apply for funding, let's say to go to a conference or like some travel trip, uh, UFB typically only funds five members of the club to go, just to make sure that we have enough funds to support uh, as many groups as possible. Um, if it's a performance and you need like an entire team though, uh, I think that's when we can make an exception. Uh, any questions about that? Okay, great. So then the last portion of this uh, training will just sort of be quickly on how to reserve rooms. Um, and this can be like either a room or a space if you're holding an event. Uh, there are two sites that uh, we use on campus to reserve rooms. One is 25 Live and one is Space Reservations. Um, and I can just quickly go to them here. So they both serve the same like same function. Uh, some people prefer 25 Live because it has more information on it. You can see like what rooms are reserved from what for what periods of time, whereas um, Space reservation is has a, like a cleaner interface, but doesn't have um, as much information. So, um, okay. So let's say, for example, you're on space reservation. You just fill out the time, um, how many people you want. Let's say 60, and then it'll give you um, the available spaces. You can then fill it out um, and make your reservation. Similarly, on 25 Live, you can search for. Um, locations and uh, it'll show you what's available uh, and then if you click I think there's like a little yeah if you like click these open spaces that's when you can make a reservation so that's generally how a uh, room reservation works um, okay great so make sure you make your reservations based on uh, like where you want it what time you want and how many people um, and then I think that's it recommends using 25 live for more complex reservations so if you have like multi-day events or uh, conferences things like that and then general tips and tricks for room reservation uh, make your reservation as early as possible because space does fill up um, especially now since we don't have Wilson Hall um, make at least 48, prior, 48 hours prior to the event, and then your reservation isn't final until you receive confirmation from the SAO. So even if you place it in the system, uh, it's not yours until you get that uh, like confirmation email. Uh, and then these are some tips and tricks for uh, <coughs> event planning in general. Um, make facilities, medias, food requests as early as possible. Again, at least 10 days in advance. Um, new this year, tables and chairs are covered by UFB. So if you have um, an event that requires those, hopefully uh, this will help cover the cost for that. Um, you can also contact the SAO if you want someone to help you plan your event. 
Um, and then earlier this year, we held an event planning, event planning 101, uh, sort of similar to this, but really in depth about event planning. And those slides are on BearSync if you want sort of a more detailed uh, view on how to host events. OK, great. Um, and then here are some very helpful SAO contacts. Uh, like Alessandro mentioned earlier, the SAO is located on the second floor of fonts. If you just, if there's Petarudi, you just walk to the other side. Um, that's where you'll find SAO. Um, yeah, great. Okay, cool. So that concludes our training. Does anyone have any uh, general questions they would like to ask? Yeah. I can talk yeah. about that. Okay, cool. So, um, that is a great question. That's something that we're still working on in the transition, so thanks so much for your patience. Um, what we are doing now is setting up a um, feedback form, not feedback form, but a Google form to get a sense. So, I guess our biggest issue is that since S groups weren't under UFB, we don't have as well of an understand, or we don't have an understanding of what sort of items you all want to request, um, what sort of funding that you'd want. So um, we want to collect that information uh, this semester, I would say in the coming weeks. So um, um, we will be sending out a Google form that uh, will ask the student groups what sort of funding that you will expect, or that you have had and will expect for next year. Um, that's, that is what I would say for now. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that we're still figuring things out with um, how service groups can be funded. Do you, yeah, do you have any questions? Next semester, though, is our funding staying the same, and then next semester, those changes would kick in, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit to the annual budgeting process, especially for groups that don't have the uh, budget to reference for precedent? Sure. Okay, yeah, that's a great question. Um, hold on, I'll put up here. <coughs> Okay, so for annual budgeting, do you specifically mean, um, wait, could you talk a little bit more about your question? So uh, if, I mean, the group I help lead hasn't, as a category three, okay. does not uh, have an annual budget other than baseline funding in previous years. Mm -hmm. What is the process like for establishing an annual budget and advocating for that? Sure, that's a great question. So. Um, I will say, so did your group go from like category two to three recently? Um, or? A couple of years ago. Okay, sure. So um, in that case, I would say, um, well, first of all, your rep would be able to help you out with that and maybe some more concrete ways with how they could help out is, um, for example, if your group, um, looking at the category or the genre that your group is in, um, or the type of group, I guess. So for example, if you if your group is a performance group, then maybe your rep could walk you through um, like some example budgets of other similar performance groups, and that might help um, in thinking of creating your budget. Um, I would say that's one thing. Um, Alessandro, do you have any things that you yeah. want to say? Um, just like in the weeks anticipating the annual budgeting process, your reps will be in contact with you. So just like look out for an email for your rep. Um, and essentially they'll be setting up meeting times because to request annual budgeting, you actually have to meet with your rep. It's like part of our policy. Um, so you'll be meeting with your rep and they'll be taking through, uh, you'll be taking them through your budget and they'll be not giving you any advice that they have and things like that. Um, specifically in your case, I will like get a list of the different things that you've been spending for the past like few years. And with your baseline funding, uh, see whether or not that's something that could be funded based on what you know about UFB uh, through supplemental, not fun, supplemental, through annual funding. Um, and then have that list down and then put that in the preliminary budget uh, that you're gonna show to your UFB rep. Cool. Thank you. And is this gonna be around March? I would say March or April. Um, <coughs> keep an eye out. Oh, okay, so it'll probably have an April, so keep an eye out probably early March. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And logistically speaking, how you would submit that budget is just like here, this is a drop down menu. If you click it, up, there's one selection that's like annual budgeting, spring 2018. And that's where you can put in all your line items. Um, yeah, Alessandra? Yeah. Just one last note. Whenever you're submitting a budget, but you don't, but you're still like, it, it's still in the works, um, and you're about to meet with your rep, don't actually press the submit button. Just put save changes. Because once you create and submit a budget, you can't edit it. So just make sure that you don't have it submitted until you've actually met with your rep and you like, give it the once over. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Any other general questions? Otherwise, um, we can sort of end for today, and then we will stay behind for a couple minutes if you have like a specific question for your club. Joey, were there any big points that you wanted to hit on? No. Okay. Perfect. Great. Um, thanks so much for coming today. Uh, make sure you get a piece of pizza if there's anything left, and then if you could sign in, that would be great, just so we have an idea of who came in. Um, and the sign-in laptop is back there. Yeah, there's a whole pizza left. Whole pizza. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes.